How about that? Um, you're going to hear more about that in the coming weeks. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to be telling you who to vote for. I think you are intelligent enough to figure that out. You are a follower of Christ. You have principles you stand on. You have things that you will uh, decide that are important to you that will help you make those decisions. But I just want to tell you that uh, this past week, our staff was uh, fortunate enough, blessed enough to take a field trip. We took a field trip to Decision America uh, in Raleigh, the last stop on Franklin Graham's 50 Capitals tour. And it was amazing. Let me just say that. If you've never heard Franklin Graham or Billy Graham right there, it was just like he sounded just like his dad. It was just amazing. And he spoke the truth. He didn't say, this is what you need to do, this is who you, but he spoke the truth. And here's what we need to understand this morning. The truth is enough. The truth is enough. You know, and I thought about him and going to all 50 capitals and sharing his message. And I wondered if he ever had a time where people were very quiet. Kind of like right now. Because those are the, these are the things you're not supposed to mix together, right? Religion and politics. Now, but preacher, be careful. Be careful. Don't be talking about my person. Here's the thing. We should use our faith to determine who we send to represent us. End of story. All the stuff about... Um, you shouldn't talk about that with this person or that person. That's just junk. And I'm not doing this today, even though you think I'm doing it today. I'm not talking about it today, but kind of like I was sharing earlier this morning, we were talking, somebody brought something up. I said, up, oh, we're not getting started on that today. We'll be here all day. So, uh, but this morning, uh, we're going to continue in our uh, series uh, in the book of Colossians. And... Uh, just an amazing uh, revealing of truth from this word we're going to look at this morning. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. There you go. Well, that's small over here. Let's get my bifocals adjusted. Good thing I got it right here. Amen. All right. So this morning we, we read these words. Paul writing to the church, and he says, I want you to know how much I have agonized for you and for the church at Laodicea and for many other believers who have never met me personally. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I am telling you this so no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments. For though I am far away from you, my heart is with you. And I rejoice that you are living as you should and that your faith in Christ is strong. Verse 6 and now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth. You are taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you so much for your word this morning. Lord, just pierce our hearts, convict us, move us, grow us, stretch us, make us into that person you would have us to be in you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. So one of the first things we want to see this morning and talk about this morning is having confidence in Christ. Confidence in Christ. He says, I want you to know how much I have agonized for you and for the church at Laodicea. And for many other believers who have never met me personally. Let me ask you, when's the last time you have agonized over a church that you have never visited, a pastor whom you have never met, in a land you may never visit, that is persecuted daily. The thought just came to me how he's writing this uh, to churches that maybe he's not been to or not been to yet throughout the New Testament. And he truly has a genuine concern and love for other believers. And he says that and says, I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. But he says, the church at Laodicea and for many other believers who, I have, who have never met me personally. You know, as believers, sometimes we focus on our relationship and the people in our area, our little small group or our little small uh, circle of influence. Maybe it's a larger circle of influence. Maybe we don't think about those other churches, maybe in our, even in our own area or in a place far away who have to deal with these very things. But agonized is a very strong word. He says, I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. So he wants them to be encouraged. That means us walking alongside each other. Now, if I ask you this morning, if you could walk alongside and encourage the person beside you, you would probably be able to say yes. Why is that? Because you sit with them most every week. If I said, okay, everybody get up and walk around. We're going to play some music. And when the music stops, you jump in a seat. Then you walk alongside that person and encourage them this next week. It might be a little different. It might open your eyes a little bit. And that's what he's saying. He wants us to be encouraged and knit together. He doesn't say by love, by strong ties of love. Sometimes I think we miss the mark in how we walk alongside and encourage each other as Christians. I think as Christians, many times we think we all have it all together. And it's funny sometimes when I share some things about my life or my walk or our family with some other folks, maybe I haven't had the best week. And sometimes the response I get just makes me smile. People might say, well, gosh, I'd have never known that. Wow, that really happens at your house too? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But you see, I was at a uh, youth camp, and they had a game at night where the students were just set free on the campus of this college, and they had to find a safe place. And they had to ask people for directions to it, and people would give them verses of Scripture they should know but some of them were twisted a little bit. And so the whole thing was they had to try to find this safe place without getting a mark on their hand or getting arrested or following someone who had shared a verse that was twisted that wasn't the truth. 
And so it gave this feel of persecution. It gave this feel of not really knowing. It gave this feel of the importance of the truth. And I think as followers of Christ, many times maybe we have that confidence in Christ, but we don't share it with those around us. We don't walk alongside them. We're worried about our little bubble, our glass bubble that we have. But he says, for churches, I want you to be encouraged and knit together with strong ties of love. But for different churches, it seems like sometimes that the whole All of the churches in the world are in one big giant men's softball league. If you've ever played in a church men's softball league, you will understand that. It's not always pretty. When the preachers have to break up their people who have slid in too hard to second base. And it's a competition. He says, hey, have that confidence in Christ and walk together alongside each other as believers. The moment we find out someone's a believer, we say, hey, are you a believer? They say, yes, I am. We ought to just hug on them and say, that's awesome. Me too. Here's what he did for me. But maybe that excitement's waning a little bit as we grow older. Verse 3 says, in him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So have that confidence in Christ. And then he says, I am telling you this so no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments. For though I am far away from you, my heart is with you. And I rejoice that you are living as you should and that your faith in Christ is strong. He's saying, be careful. Be careful. There are those who would want you to stray away from the faith or there are those who would mix up the faith a little bit, a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of this and a little bit of the spiritual principles from the world to kind of get you confused. But he says, continue in Christ. Continue in Christ. And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must what? Continue to follow him. Continue to follow him. Now, in your work, in your job, or in your daily things that you have to do, how many of you find it easy to continue in that daily, weekly, monthly, annually. That you just wake up in the morning and you're like, it is Monday! Woo! I cannot wait to see what's waiting for me when I get there. It's going to be amazing. Those people are always so encouraging and lovely first thing in the morning. We always get along. The machines are always perfect shape. Just Top-notch running condition, never a failure, never a breakdown. People pay their bills on time, and so our company's able to run smoothly. Our deliveries are always just in time and even ahead of schedule most times. I never have to wait when I make a delivery. The people are so helpful. Is that how we usually start our week? No. No. We wake up and we're like, ah. And that continuing piece is the hard piece. Maybe you had a great week last week and you're like, man, this really wasn't a bad week. But I won't pay for it next week. Or today was a great day. Boy, tomorrow is going to be bad. Why do we do that? Because that continuing is the hard part. To continue with faith in Christ and all that we do with all that comes at us each and every day is not always easy. That's why he says, takes it back to now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. You must. This ain't Monday morning. You must. 
Continue. Now, continue there. He says, get it so that in your daily walk, you are continuing. Because it says, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Not let him come into what you've already built. Not let him come into what you're doing. Let, not let him come into your family and see if he can help or not. Build your lives on him. Work, home, family, finances, relationships. Build it all on him. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your, your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught. And you will overflow with thankfulness. See, when you continue and you let those roots grow deep by continuing daily, That's when your faith grows strong. Does your faith grow stronger in the valleys when things are really tough and something awful is happening? Yes. But then something happens and we come out of that and we're up on a mountaintop and we're like, whoo, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm kind of making it now. We're good. I'm, I'm in control again. Valley, oh God, where are you? You see, when we continue with him in a daily walk, we continue in Christ, then, then we have a lot fewer mountaintops and valleys and it looks a little more like this because we know that we have confidence in Christ and that we're going to continue in Christ whether he answers that prayer to heal that person or not, whether he touches our lives and changes that situation or not, he's going to change us so that it will be okay with us because it's his will, not our will. Amen? So that's where we are with that. It says, then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. You know, in this day and time, it's hard to find someone overflowing with thankfulness. You've heard the saying, have an attitude of gratitude. But I would share with you this morning that we tend to have that on Sundays. We tend to have that at mealtimes. How about every other day of the week? See, that thankfulness and that overflow, that overflow of the Holy Spirit in us that we're just giving him gratitude and we're sharing him with everyone, that's where we serve best. We serve out of the overflow. We don't serve out of the, the dry and rusted insides that we have. It's like a gas tank with no fuel and has been sitting out in a field for years. So we've got to have that overflow of thankfulness, because if we have that overflow of thankfulness from a strong faith, then we ourselves are just overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Now, you can talk about it. You can wear a T-shirt about it. You can have a bumper sticker on your car about it. But if it's not in here, it doesn't matter. If it's not in here, it doesn't matter. If I ask you this morning, how many of you have been cut off in traffic by a person that had a sticker on their car that had a church sign on it or said, I love Jesus or it's all about God? Raise your hand. Probably on the way to church. May have been in the parking lot. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So we have to continue in Christ in every little bit that we do. And we have to be captured by Christ. Otherwise, we will be captured by something else. In verse 8, he says, Don't let anyone 
capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers or the spiritual principles of this world rather than from Christ. So we need to be captured by Christ. We need to be completely His, sold out. No way we can ever be deceived into thinking anything else other than the truth. If you've ever played the game called Capture the Flag, that is a fun game to play. I played that when I was a little boy at night. We would play Capture the Flag at night out in the yard. And you sometimes trip, fall down, get hurt, get laughed at. But you had a good time. And then, as an adult... Someone shared with me about a game called Capture the Flag where you have paintball guns. And I went to this wow paintball field and we started on one side and we knew where the flag was on the other side and they started on their side and knew where the flag was over here. And honest to goodness, we had all that camo and all that stuff on and I'm in my late 20s probably, and I'm going down those trails just easing along. Honestly, I knew why God did not place me in the military. <laughs> I felt like I was in Vietnam or somewhere with the jungle, all the growth, and I was like, somebody is probably looking at me and getting ready to shoot me right now. And I don't say that to belittle our soldiers. I say that because I literally was worried. And I thought, I cannot imagine doing that when it is for real. Some of you have done that, and it has been for real, and I thank you for that. Because in just that little paintball gun, I was so excited. It was so much fun. But inside, I was freaking out. I was like, oh, my. And then all of a sudden, you hear that and you just knew it was on. You knew it was on. But we tried to make our way, and here's the thing. The closer we got to the flag, the harder it was to capture because they had folks there defending it. I'd ask you this morning, if you've truly been captured by Christ, you've truly been captured by Christ, how easy is it for someone to change your thinking about who Christ is and about your faith and what you believe? Because, see, the first place they start is, well, this is what we have in common, but then this. Here's what we have in common, but then this. And it takes you further and further away. And the closer someone gets to your flag of Jesus the harder it should be for them to capture your heart. You should say, hey, this is what I believe. Because he says, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers. That capture, that word literally means to kidnap or take as spoils of war. And you see, sometimes we can be captured by the world as well. The philosophies of the world, the spiritual principles of the world that some folks have just stirred up and mixed up and made us think all these crazy things, and sometimes people go away from that. And they find themselves there. So we have to be on guard. We have to defend. We have to defend that faith, we have to truly be captured only by Christ. And then finally, it says, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ 
who is the head over every ruler and authority. We have to be completed by Christ. Completed by Christ. See, as we grow up and grow out and go out into the world and we meet that person who is our other half, who is our soulmate, who makes our world turn, you know why many times that kind of grows away or someone can't meet those high expectations because they're expecting that other person to be their everything? They are expecting that other person to meet every need. But the only person who can meet every need is Christ. We have to be completed by Christ. We have to understand that Christ dwelling in a human body here on this earth is the fullness of God and all that he is. He's saying to the Colossians here, he's not just a lesser being, a, a lesser God, if you will. Hey, pay attention. He is God and will always be. So make sure you understand that. Make sure you know that. And so understand that if you accept him, if you have that assurance of eternal life through Christ, it is because of who he is. It is because we have all the fullness of God and we share as his joint heir in all of eternity. It says, so you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. So he is the head over what? Every ruler and authority. So during this time of turmoil and struggle in our lives and this, everybody's worrying about November and what about November? And what about November? Guess what? God is God. He's on the throne. Do you think he's worried about the election? But he does call us to do our part as Christians. But he's not worried. Because he is the head over every ruler and authority. Completed by Christ. Understanding that he is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That's what he said. So it's not all these rivers that flow in together into one big heavenly ocean. It's Jesus and him alone. You know, and I'm reminded, as I was sharing with someone, years and years ago about this calling on my life that I had sensed for a long time. But I continued to run and I continued to run and I continued to run and I thought that was going to be the time that I surrendered, but it wasn't. And I share it with you like this. That calling on my life to follow and answer God's call to ministry was like being in a cinder block room with a wall 20 feet high, no doors, no windows. And I could run and I could jump and try to get up to the top. I back up, say maybe I'll run a long ways in that room. And I'd run and I'd jump and try to get up. And I had been completed in Christ. I knew him as my savior. But there are no windows and no doors in this room. It's the best way I can share that analogy. But there was no roof either. And it was as if God was saying, hey, there's only one way out. And that's when I put my hand in and down to that floor You 
to step up into my hand and let me lift you up and lift you out and bring you to my fullness. And then you'll see what it's all about. So that picture of me running and running and running in that room and jumping and running and running. You see, it wasn't until I just got so tired that I couldn't take it anymore. And I just heard God almost audibly, just I felt the sensing in my heart of him saying, when will you give it all to me? See, society, society is the thing that determines our, what we think about life and what we think about where we are and how we measure up and whether we're successful or not. But guess what? Many times we feel like there's no way out. We feel like we are working in this big, ginormous cinder block, cement wall place that we can't get out of. And that when we die, that's it. Let me tell you this morning, you can get out. And yes, when we die, we will get out because we will be in heaven. We'll be in the presence of God forever and ever. When we're absent from the body, we'll be present with the Lord. But you see, we can get out of that, some of that mess we're in now if we'll just slow down and stop running and running and running and running and focus on our daily walk when we decide to be completed by Christ, captured by Christ. And we have confidence in Christ. We continue in Christ. That's the thing we have to continue. This morning, you can't continue with Christ if you don't have a relationship with Christ. Maybe this morning you are here and you have run as hard as you possibly know. Maybe you've run completely away from God, trying to get away from something that's been hurtful to you in the past. Whatever it is you're struggling with, an addiction, pain, someone has hurt you. work situation, a mess, whatever it is, listen. He wants you to give that all over to Him right now this morning. He wants you to be completed by Him and understand that is your union, your daily walk, you're continuing with Him that's going to get you through. But you can't continue with Jesus if you've never started with Jesus. So this morning, I want to just ask you to bow your heads and let us pray and Father, I pray this morning as everyone in here is praying, God, I ask them to pray for the person beside them. I ask them to pray for the people down front, the people in the back who have never been completed by Christ or those who are struggling this morning. Lord, as a church like Paul, we want to agonize over the lives of those who believe and Lord for this morning those who don't believe so Father if there's one here this morning that does not know you God I pray they would pray a prayer after me maybe something like this dear Lord Jesus I know I am a sinner without you I am lost and on my way to hell but I believe Jesus, that you walked on this earth, you died on a cross, and that you rose again from my sins. It should have been me, but it was you. Lord, come into my life and save me. Forgive me. I repent. Change me. I believe in you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Before we finish this prayer, I would just ask that if you prayed this prayer, I want you to look at me right now. If you prayed this prayer this morning 
not a rededication, not, Lord, I want to get closer, but a prayer of repentance and forgiveness and asking Jesus to come into your heart and life. If you are looking at me, I want you to just make your way right here, right now. Come on, nobody else is watching. It's just you. Stand up, stand up, make your way. Make your way right down here to my right. Make your way. Make your way right down here to my right. That's it. That's it. Someone's waiting for you. Someone's waiting for you. Someone else. Someone else. Don't wait. Don't delay. Make this step, that first step. Father, thank you for what you are doing right now in the hearts and lives of your people. God, move again in the lives of these believers as only you can. In Jesus' name.